This week... Why are we talking about this now? The water bomber delivery to Korea runs into heavy trouble. We're not taking off out of this. And the crew's sanity is hanging by a thread. There's no f***ing planning here. Plus, Mikey joins some paratroopers. This is right out of the movie, man. And enters the drop zone. Your hats, boy. Buffalo Airways is being invaded. Canadian Forces paratroopers are in Yellowknife for a northern training exercise. Holy smokes, it looks like an episode of MASH. And Mikey McBrien's invited them to see the plane paratroopers jumped from 70 years ago. WZS right behind me. This is uh, probably our most famous DC-3. So June 6, 1944, the 11th wave in Normandy. And uh, uh, its major job was, of course, bringing in the paratroopers coming in. Buffalo's DC-3 helped deliver thousands of Allied troops into occupied France on D-Day in 1944. 821 airplane loads, 13,000 paratroops. And in exchange for this history lesson, Mikey's new friends are making him an offer. He seemed to have a, like a keen interest in everything aviation. You know, I think maybe sometime come and see what we do. And Probably, yeah, I'd love to for sure, man. Check it all out. Hey, listen up. You've now been manifested in your will parachute in accordance with my instructions and all orders applicable to this call. Have a good job. A few days later, Mikey is Bravo Company's guest at Operation Arctic Ram. Hold it up. Hold it up. It's the largest training exercise ever conducted in the Canadian North. I'm technically ready to jump out of an airplane. <laughs> yeah, we're going on a flight to see what uh, happens next. I predict this airplane's going to be a lot lighter when we return. The airplane is a C-130 Hercules, a far cry from the old DC-3. Ah, uh, man, it's the front row seat to the best freaking airborne unit in the world, TNT. No messing around. This airplane has a job, and that job today is to throw people out of it. definitely sovereign. They can come back to Yellowknife life anytime, more than well. Watching the troops in action has inspired Mikey, and it's good timing, because before his week is over, he'll need all the inspiration he can get. A world away from Yellowknife. Captain Justin Simley and mechanic Corey Dodd have arrived in Seoul, South Korea, to soak up some local culture. Every time I leave you only have to go down south, the first thing I do is I go get burgers. Waffle with cheese. Life is pretty darn good. So it's an absolute success so far. <laughs> They're here to work on a CL215 water bomber Buffalo sold to Korean buyers. 
three weeks ago, Buffalo oversaw hoisting the plane onto a cargo ship in Vancouver. We're, we're on the boat, boys. <laughs> Hardly we didn't miss the boat. From there, it sailed up the west coast to pick up extra cargo in Alaska before beginning a 7,000 kilometer journey across the North Pacific, past Russia's Kamchatka Peninsula and Japan, en route to Seoul. We're selling them and operating them basically worldwide now. And I think people are starting to realize out there that yeah, we're not just a bunch of hillbillies up in the north flying cargo and you know, the old World War II airplanes. You know, we're making some impact. Jung Soo Kim, their Korean contact, has been monitoring the voyage. So he must be past Japan by now. Yeah, yeah. He's a hundred kilometer east of Kamchatka Peninsula, and that report was uh, three to four days ago. Once the plane arrives, the Buffalo crew will help set up the local firefighting operation. At their hotel, Corey and Justin meet up with the rest of the team, including veteran training captain John Adamson. Good. And Buffalo mechanic Matt Belanger, who will get the local operation up and running. We're in trouble, right? We're in trouble, right? Yeah, no, no, no trouble. You may go upset and rest out. And as the crew heads to their rooms, they get the first sign that this job and their Korean clients will be full of surprises. Oh, yeah, it's got a big door. Their Korean hosts have booked them accommodations that aren't exactly family friendly. Look at this shit, check this out. Look at this. <laughs> My bed is round. Never slept in a round bed with a circle mirror above it. I don't even want to really dig too deep in this. You know what's worrying me is there's no plastic, eh? So you just give her a quick wipe down. I think it's uh, for prostitutes, I would have to say. <laughs> what the f is to do with this shit? Oh my god. The lube and the perfume and the combs and <laughs> there's a whole section in the hotel for basically getting yourself all prettied up after you do the deed. We're not just mechanics anymore. We are we're world travelers. You know? <laughs> Being a Buffalo Airways mechanic on CL215 is a pretty pimping job, I must admit. I feel like, like Donald Trump or something. The rooms are a shock. See you world. But there's a lot more to come. What happens in Korea stays in Korea, that's for sure. <laughs> well, now we're headed into work, I guess. Find out where our ship is, maybe. Justin and Corey meet up with the Koreans to plan the local pilot training. And right away, it's clear there's a culture clash. Hello. Hi, guys. Well, there's like a certain way to shake hands. Justin Simley. I was looking them in the eye while I shook their hands, and I don't know, I guess they didn't like that. Justin, nice to meet you. Hi. You know, they're very status-oriented. No one gave us the how to greet the Korean manual. We're just showing up, being playful. The company will be the first in Korean history to fight fire with a fixed-wing aircraft. They've staked everything on the venture and made big promises to the government. And this is really, really important. Mm -hmm. Everybody watching us, yeah. even our president office, they, they know. Fuel, we need a fuel supply and nitrogen. And in their enthusiasm, they might have promised a little too much. I'm, I've never heard of yeah. anybody fighting fire at night. The fact that they want to drop water at night, it just blows my mind. So the people are supposed to be out of the, the dropping zone. It's mandatory. It's mandatory. So, uh, how many minutes you require people escape from the dropping zone? It's like they, they picked up the brochure and they looked at this thing and said, oh, this looks pretty cool. I'm going to buy one. Everybody figures it's a fire truck. You can get in it, drive downtown, put out the fire at the local grocery mart. We explained by, so this is a fire zone, yeah. and this is you, yeah. and you do this is fine. And you do, do the final approach yeah. like this. And, and they're, this. They don't know what they're doing. So they're just trying to wing it as they go along. And you know they're almost going backwards before they go forwards. And this time, the ground is supposed to be 100 feet away from the... At least. At, at least, least, least 100 feet from the fire zone. You know? it's a, it's the I don't know. It's, they, don't, they don't know what they're getting into. 
and Corey and Justin don't know what their hosts will be getting them into when the plane shows up. It's beautiful. Minus nine. We should be sitting out here in our bathing suit. Oh, it's pretty nice. On Great Slave Lake in Yellowknife, Mikey McBrien is running out of time. How much are you at now for weight loss? Uh, geez, probably about 40 pounds. Amazing. So good. I'm not doing too, too good, I don't think. In just a few days, he's leading a team in a northern snowshoe relay. So he and his fitness trainer, Tara, are doing some last minute cramming. What I have to do is just get on snowshoes. Uh, before work, after work, lunch, doesn't matter. Them, when you walk in them, do you feel awkward? Do you feel weird? Yeah, like maybe like a clown, maybe. <laughs> so you really got to get accustomed to, uh, you know, these big paddles on your feet. The 45-kilometer Frostbite 45 has been Mikey's motivation for a four-month fitness program. It's a beautiful day today, so just imagine minus 30. Your body's oh, yeah. going to be burning a ton of extra calories has to work a lot harder in order to do just that. So I wanted to take a step back and look uh, in myself and see if I can do something that was like truly difficult, which is, uh, you know, to get in the shape. But he also doesn't want to be humiliated, so he's got a plan. One more. I got a spot open, so I was hoping that, uh, you know, uh, actually hire you as a ringer to hopefully get our, our lap times up. Yeah, I know. I'd love to. That sounds like a great idea. Does the team have a name? Yeah, well, right now, hey, I, I call it Mikey's Angels. Mikey's Angels. <laughs> <laughs> Her job is to work out all day, so I'm pretty sure she can handle running around the snow for an hour or so. So hopefully we can have a pretty good team and uh, not come in last place, which is uh, my goal. I'll race you back. Right? Oh, jeez. Okay. Let's go. But will a grade A ringer be enough to keep Mikey from the back of the pack? Wait up, please. It's reunion time in Seoul. Well, we're here. I mean, uh, the ship just cooled in like half an hour ago. It's in Seoul time today. Look at that. But after three weeks at sea, what kind of shape is it in? It looks, it looks like it's in 100% shape. I was actually totally shocked. It was completely in one piece. How's it looking? Looks good. There was no damage. Zero. Come look at your airplane. Come on. Finally, finally, this is a really wrong journey. But the journey isn't over. The water bomber needs to get to its new base in Sachion, 300 kilometers south. And that means getting it off the ship. Oh, we're just trying to get off the ship, but everybody's in a huge panic. And the longshoremen guys, they just started attacking this thing, like taking all the chains. And then the shit show began. A lot of yelling and screaming down there, though. Oh, they got very heated. There was pushing and shoving, and there was about six different fights going on at once. The communication breakdown is starting to threaten the mission. And the plan was to fuel it on the ship. That's uh, not allowed, so they're coming up with a plan B in about four different languages. That's only the warm-up. Why are we talking about this now? Yeah, yeah. We talked about this 17 times already in the last yeah. two weeks. God damn it. Contrary to plans, Corey's being told he can't pump necessary nitrogen into the landing gear. What a pain in the ass, man. It's off. Unless he can pump in the nitrogen, they can't land the plane on a runway. It's like taking off your car with flat tires. You just don't drive away with flat tires. And now, the wind is picking up. Yeah, we got wind, we got no fuel, we got no nitrogen. Pretty much got a shitty situation right now. A bit of a gong show. We have a serious problem. We need to figure out how we're going to get the gas in the airplane. We don't even have enough gas on there, Mr. Lim, to start the APU. Thank you. At least Corey finally has permission to pump the nitrogen. 
There we go. What an episode, man, for a little bit of nitrogen, a little bit of, little bit of air. The landing gear will work, but the crew will have to fuel the plane once it's in the water. A much more difficult operation than on the deck. That's good. Well, what we like to do is if we can just lift it up about a foot, and then we just spin it by hand, like uh -huh. we by hand, and, and put the tail over there, and the nose, just put it like this, and just move it like this. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah okay, as long as you know, I think you know what he's doing. I just, a little worried, right? Okay. The dock hands have never hoisted any freight like this. Up we go. We gotta swing it around and through these stanchions. It's just so sketchy because the tail is so close. It's bumping it and it puts a big dent in it. The wind is fing them over. It's the worst case wind. If we were taking it off this side of the ship, it would be better, but. Well, we didn't have a dangle in this side last time. That's not something you see every day, I'll tell you that much. Do you want us to go unhook it? Somebody? Yeah, go on. <laughs> Get in there. We need that center, that boat hooked to the tail with a, with a solid line. Yeah. Just to drag it out, at least so we're out of the freaking danger here. Two or two eight one aside. Too many your people yelling and screaming, eh? Yeah. A little more, a little more. Okay, cool. This thing's gonna push me. Up. Oh. Clear. Yeah. Okay. Let's get the out of here. Yeah, let's go back, guys. The plane's down in one piece, but there are more problems waiting in the water. What's he got? He's still got five drums. Yeah, five. Yeah, give me two and a half and two and a half. I asked them to bring seven drums of fuel for our flight, and, and they brought five. Yeah, we're good. I asked them why they brought five. They said, well, that's what the manual says. The book says we're going to fly for 40 minutes, so we need 41 minutes worth of gas. You imagine if we flew around in the fucking Arctic on a 40 minute trip with 41 minutes worth of fucking gas? You wouldn't be here. Be gentle, 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 gentle. The tug will tow the plane out into open water, away from the traffic, to take off. They want to take us out about uh, six miles past the harbor. And we'll be doing the first CL215 takeoff from the Sea of Japan. How much further is it going to take us? Do we know? They wanted us 11 or 12 miles from this airport here, so. I just thought it was anywhere out here. So we don't make waves in their harbor. Get rough out here. The Koreans promised calm, sheltered water for takeoff. But the farther out to sea the plane goes, the bigger the waves are getting. I think they're going to our uh, takeoff point. Okay. The 215 is designed to scoop water from calm lakes. It's not built to survive pounding ocean waves. But she said it's the last chance to take off at that point. The main harbor is impossible. Well, this is impossible. This is illegal. This is outside the airplane's limits. I think you're talking crazy talk here. The sea is getting so bad, Justin has to fire the engines just to keep the plane stable and upright. Ready? Uh -huh. We're just trying to keep it under control. Six, seven foot waves over there now. There's a gutter. We're getting pounded by these waves. Like, see, it's getting worse. Put your seatbelt on. Oh, we're not, we're not taking off out of this. There's no fucking way in. Justin's caught in the middle between a very impatient customer and a very angry sea.
You know, this ain't gonna fucking fly. Oh, we're not, we're not taking off out of this, John. Look at it. In Seoul, Korea, Justin Simley is under pressure to take off and deliver the CL-215 water bomber. Man, this is bad. Where's our boat? But the waves are just too much for his plane. We gotta tow ourselves back into the harbor now. On the boat. He said this is a uh, best place for takeoff. No, it's a, ter it's a terrible fucking place for takeoff. We're gonna do one of two things. We're gonna find a protected bay so we can take this fucking thing off without breaking it into pieces. Or we're gonna go back to the fucking harbor and put it on dry land. And taking off here is not an option. I guess we're shut down. Thank God the tugboat guy wasn't too far away. And we told him, back to harbor. That's it. No more messing around, otherwise we're going to sink the darn thing. Justin's killed the takeoff. But getting back to the harbor is going to be a much bigger problem. Oh, my God. Back in Yellowknife, Mikey's facing a big hurdle of his own. Terry gave me the news that she won't be able to make it to the Frostbite 45. That's 20% of my team gone right there. But he's figured out a last minute sub for his all female angels. I'm a little bit late, but uh, we're off to the airport. A replacement who's going to be a long shot. Kate Eaton is a fashion model who Mikey met last year on a trip to Toronto. Over the past year, I got to know Kate quite well. We had mutual friends, and we were joking around with the idea that she wanted to come to Yellowknife, and, you know, the Frostbite 45 came up, and I said, hey, this is a perfect opportunity for Kate to come here. Kate was coming as a spectator, but now she's being drafted. Growing up in Hay River, there's two things we've never seen, Whew. movie stars, models. So hopefully it's not too much of a culture shock for her. Uh, who knows, maybe she'll stay, who knows, eh? <laughs> So, cold enough for you? It's not that bad. No? no it's not that bad. <laughs> Until she gets outside. It's a nice crisp air, eh? Oh. Yeah, my hands just flash froze. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't really think about the whole marathon. Right. I just thought, all right, good times in Yellowknife. So well, here they are. Number two, this is great. This is just like being at work. <laughs> Somebody puts my shoes on for me. No way they do that. Sure they do. Like a team of people dress you at work? Yeah. Really? There you go. There you go. Uh, how's that feel? Feels cumbersome. Snowshoeing was something that I had never done before. So strapping on a pair the day before the race for the first time left me feeling a little unhinged. I was cold. To be honest, I was worried about the cold. I wasn't confident going into the race. But Mikey's got no one else he can count on. We're uh, going back to the harbor now. Just because it's too rough. We're still in the further ahead than what we were. Off the coast of South Korea, the 215 crew is heading back to harbor. Oh, oh, oh. We've been bobbing around in the ocean off Korea for approximately seven hours now. Where's well, here we are? But they've got to wait for another boat to bring the sling so the plane can be hoisted onto the dock. Why does it have to come out of the water? Like, well, it's a boat. It, it does, it, we've had it in the water overnight before. It's good overnight. You know, for twelve hours we can get going in the morning. Like, we're running out of time. We're not doing this in the dark. But the harbor officials have laid down the law. So until the boat arrives, the crew is stuck. We might as well be in a refugee boat there, cramped up in this sardine can, basically. We had no water. We have no food. And obviously, in a CL215, there's no bathroom. So we had to cut open oil pail. They're just so unorganized. And their rescue boat is nowhere in sight. Yeah, we've heard the fucking boat is coming all day long today. Yeah, yeah. The boat does not come. Every time you see it's coming, it doesn't come. Where's the boat? Like hours go by. Hours go by. You know? 
Where was the boat? Really Where's the boat that's here. coming to pick us up? At, at this point right now, I'm getting very frustrated. This is really starting to piss me off. There's no fucking planning here. You call 10,000 people, the boat's coming, the boat's always coming, but it never comes. Corey was not a happy Corey. I haven't ate since six o'clock in the morning. I'm getting pissed off, you know? Yeah. And I know it's not your fault. Sorry. But who is the person we talk to to get shit done? Is it your boss? Like the guy who paid for this thing? Because no. maybe he should be here fucking running the show. Or at least get someone who can who, who can fucking get the shit done. It felt like I was on Gilligan's Island without ginger, you know. A three-hour tour. <laughs> <laughs> I know it's missing. Trust me. I know he should be right there. But no green frog, no crane, no sling. Corey's good luck charm is still back on dry land. Corey forgot the green frog. I blame it squarely on Corey. I don't think it's the frog's responsibility to get on the airplane. It's in my bag. In the van. <laughs> we didn't have the green frog on board and everything went for shit. It's been an entire day of frustration, and it isn't over yet. What an ordeal, man. What an ordeal. Well, welcome, everybody, to uh, year three of Frostbite 45. Record number of participants, 96 registered. Let's give yourself a hand. Mikey and his snowshoe team are at the morning briefing for today's Frostbite 45. We're dealing with deep frostbite. Okay? When you feel it, it's like a piece of frozen meat you just pu pulled out of the freezer. Okay? It's rock hard. If that's happened, okay, we're going to transport that racer to hospital and we'll rewarm it there. So what we and the newest is, member is learning much more than she wanted to know. They went into hypothermia, frostbite, and amputation, and when they mentioned fluids freezing inside of you and getting slushy, all of us were freaked out. It's a pretty interesting uh, safety briefing, and uh, hopefully it hasn't rattled my teammates too much. After months of training to get here, Mikey's fears go a lot deeper. Out of all the threats, the, the one thing I was worried about is our personal threats are, of, you know, are we going to compete to race? Are we physically fit enough? And, you know, do we have enough drive to, you know, get through this thing? It's time to find out. Six, five, four, three, two, Mikey's sister-in-law, Sasha, is tackling the first leg, the longest and hardest. Good luck, Sasha. Good luck. Look, where's mom going? She's last. She was uh, not in the front of the pack, so uh, we had to off to a very uh, you know, slow start. And right out of the gate, Mikey's team falls into last place. She had 13K, so uh, she had the, the, the hardest run. Pretty cold out here, Rod. Uh -huh. Rod ended up meeting Sasha out in the middle of the lake there to say hi and uh, give her a helpful uh, cheer on. Kind of pissed off how far ahead everybody is. That's mentally, well, that's mentally that's challenging. It is from stopping. Does nobody else need a goddamn peanut and an energy drink? Mikey's goal was for his team to come in anywhere but last. Onward. Onward. A goal that's starting to slip away. Six a.m. Another day, another dollar, another eleven-hour mission. Back in Seoul, the water bomber finally made it onto dry land late last night. Now it's heading back into the harbor. But first, we can't forget frog this time. It was very critical for the operation. Place this guy there, right in the middle. We installed the frog. So we want one here. Yeah, there we go. Well, we put him back on his little spot where he sits to monitor the two pilots and to give us his little bit of good luck. The crew's hoping the return of their missing crewmate will put the mission back on track. We're going dilly-dally today, getting towed for miles and miles with the waves building up. So we'll be around the corner and go. Young, let's go. The first goal today, a short hop to the local airstrip at Ulsan to top up the fuel tanks, if they can get the plane into the water. Yeah, 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 yeah. 
Tell him to keep some tension on the line. Tension on the line. Good. Tension on the line. Good. That's good. That's good. Well, we're just going to get towed out past the breakwater. We're going to start the engines, disconnect, run the checklist, and uh, we're going to point her in the wind and give her shit. Hey, John. Winds are definitely a little calmer today. But they can't take off until they're 11 kilometers outside the protected harbor. And the farther they go, the greater the risk of choppy waters. Can we take off from here, the uh, harbor? No, uh, no. We towed the airplane out further than it was to the airport. It was actually a total waste of time. But with the frog aboard, the seas stay calm, and the 215 can take to the air for the first time since leaving Vancouver almost a month ago. Hopefully everything goes good. Okay, follow me on the throttle, sir, please, sir. Okay, that's 40, good. Check. Good. Come on. Oh, oh, oh. Okay, 15, 15, opposing. Power up. Another local pilot has joined the crew to help in communications with the airport tower. 10 miles south. 10 miles south, Ulsan. 10 miles south of Ulsan. Your intention approaching Ulsan Airport for landing. They were speaking English, but it was pretty hard for us to capture, so we had one of the Koreans on the radio sports. It's a crowded cockpit, but they're on their way at last. We're, we're good to land straight in? Yeah, of course. Uh, Northland Tower, Hotel Lima 2036, we have your runway in sight. Full flap is set. Okay. Check. Speak off. 90. 5. Everything from there, looking good. Yeah, we're done. Well, Thank well, you, sir. Well done, sir. Wow, well, okay, well done. First ride here. Yeah. Frog, man, it's worth that. Telling you. Yeah, bitch. <laughs> Frog doesn't go anywhere, no. Yeah. <laughs> After refueling here, the crew will head to their final destination, Sachion. But there's one more big surprise coming before this mission is behind them. Out on Great Slave Lake, Mikey McBryant's months of training are about to be put to the test. I'm on the last checkpoint. One more, uh, one more leg, and we're all done. So, I'm getting kind of excited, a little bit nervous, but I won't tell anybody that. He's up for the final leg of the Frostbite 45. From his sister-in-law Sasha to his sister Kathy. We're in last place, which is perfect for me. No pressure. And his office manager Bonnie. Tired. Mikey's team has been dead last and falling farther behind. We're at the last checkpoint. Uh, Kate is coming in. She's on the second last. She's going to tag me in, and then I finish off the race. Hope she's doing okay. Now, Mikey's goal, not coming in last, is in the hands and feet of a fashion model from Ontario. Still good. It's elegant as the water buffalo. I made the decision at the last minute not to wear the snowshoes. I wasn't confident in my snowshoe abilities. Just keep a good steady pace up and try to finish. I mean, I'm not really competing against anybody right now that I know of, but you just kind of want to get it done as fast as you can. Personal best. Mikey's not expecting Kate anytime soon, or even at all. I was quite concerned that Kate would not be able to finish her 11 kilometer leg. Uh, you know, just the temperature, you know, it was kind of up in the air. But far ahead of expectations. Woo! <laughs> it was fun. You did it. Yeah. 
we just even got here. You almost beat us in the truck. That's impressive. Holy smokes, they can't be there, right? He did her. I was surprised that, you know, Kate did so well, and I was actually very happy for her, and uh, it was a really good inspiration for what I had to do next. You can do it. <laughs> Can't get any got me. What he's got to do now has been months in the making. Thank you. See you guys. I was kind of terrified uh, that all the training and everything I've been doing was coming up to this one moment where it's all up to me now. My brain tells me I shouldn't be able to do this, and my body says I can. I was impressed as heck when he took off because I didn't expect him to run. Mikey's got to pound over tough, hilly terrain. But Kate's unexpected speed has given him a chance to hit a target he thought was lost. When I started, I didn't see anybody. And as going through the trails, I began to, to just see a glimpse of, you know, two cross-country skiers. That was really a big motivation for me to pick it up. You know, seeing something in front of you like a carrot keeps you going. So uh, those two skiers gave me the motivation to, to try harder. Mikey might be able to lift his angels out of last place after all. It felt really good, you know, to eventually get by those skiers and uh, put something behind me. From a hunter, I became the hunted, and uh, it really kept me going. Oh, I'm feeling OK. Surprisingly good. Got the ACDC going. How in the hell? Go, Mike, go, Mike, go, Mike. It was awesome coming through the finish line. The whole group was there, and it was, you know, pretty cool. Good job, Mike. Good job. I didn't come in last. It was kind of sad that, and kind of happy at the whole time that all this was all over with, and it was, uh, it was kind of bittersweet. There's two skiers coming. Behind you? They were stalking me. <laughs> After months of hard work, Mikey is a changed man. But even a changed man needs a little reward. I think there's a couple beers out there with my name on them. Maybe I'll put some protein powder in my uh, Labatt Blue tonight, and we'll see what we can do next year. How many liters? 600 liters? At Ulsan Airport in Korea, the water bomber is fueled up and ready to fly. So we have how much fuel? Two hours fuel? Okay, start right engine clear. Okay, clear right. Number two, sir. Justin and the crew were now just one short flight away from getting the plane to its new home. Hey, you want me to fly down the highway? Yes. From Ulsan? Ulsan. And Hotel Lima 2036 request clearance. Uh, Backtrack runway 18. Hey, okay, we're clear to go, sir. Okay, mate. Power center speed alive, 60 knots. Oh, I got the wheel. Your wheel, sir. Justin and fellow pilot John can see that water bombing is going to be a major challenge here. There's power lines running everywhere. Power lines beneath you uh, on that bridge. That's the killer. I mean, I can't even count how many SEAL 215s have been crashed and killed people because of power lines. With the crew concentrating on the deadly obstacle course below, the Koreans have one final curveball to throw. On the right, on the right. The 
the water bomber crew is one simple landing away from delivering their plane. Yeah. Uh -huh. Hey guys, so the governor's office is right next to the mountain. It's covered by mountain. What the mountain? But on this mission, nothing is simple. Now the proud new owners want to show off their plane. They just wanted us to circle over the government headquarters in the capital of the province that signed the contract. We just want to get to our final destination. We don't need to be doing this flying around the circles and stuff. I mean, they were anxious to see their airplane to show it off, but I'll do it when I'm gone. <laughs> but after all the chaos and confusion of the past few days, Justin will do anything to put this job behind them. On the right, on the right. Yeah, we're gonna turn right around okay. the mountain here. We're gonna through that valley there. Through that valley. Okay. Power lines through that valley there. Speed is good at 140. You guys see it? Where is it? Where? Oh, down below here, maybe. No. Down here? Oh, down here. Okay, okay. 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 We are, we're relaxed. Holy mother of Christ. Hang on to your hats, boys. We start doing circles. 115 around the corner, sir. Okay, I'll make a dive, yeah. 60 degree bank turns, like five or six or seven in a row. Yeah, so that hill there? Check, there's 110. Okay. Put on a bit of a show for him. Everybody in the government there standing on the roof. Watching us fly around the circle like a bunch of idiots to see their new Fandang water bomber. One more pass? Okay, one more pass. One, one more, okay, one more. Get out of here. Let's just get to where we gotta go. And my days of doing this stupid shit are over. Such an approach, it's uh, Hotel Lima 2036. Runway 24 right, Johnny. Longer check. 105, here's down, you clear to land, sir. Okay. 187, 13 knots on the nose. 95 in the dive. Well done. Excellent. Good fun. Good job. Good job, Parksy. Thank you. Thank you. Well, a month later and we're here, eh? It's a long ways from Yellowknife, eh? Hi. Got your airplane. <laughs> You're happy? Happy. Good. It's nice to finally get it finished, and now we can start firebombing over here and setting the South Koreans up with a fire program. I think we put together a darn good team, and uh, we did a darn good job. It was a tough job. It wasn't very easy. But at least a night of relaxation awaits. It's like, thank you guys for all your hard work, and here's a round bed with a round mirror again. <laughs> yeah, another brothel in South Korea. High class, <laughs> high class. <laughs>